Hello. So one of the questions I get quite a bit when I'm out fishing on my sib and uh, posting videos is just asking me, you know, what, what's it made up of, what, what's the setup made up of, and uh, if I could just do a little video explaining. So uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Um, just go through what my sib is, why I've made it like that, and uh, sort of, yeah, advice for people maybe looking to purchase their first or maybe change their current setup a bit. Um, so yeah, I've had this set up for about a year now, coming up to a year, and uh, yeah, I've changed a few things during that time, um, but uh, I'm quite happy with it at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see I use it quite a bit, go all over the place in it, um, and uh, I'm very confident in it, and uh, yeah, there's not really much to change now, but uh, yeah, I'll just show you it quickly whilst we're on dry land, and you can get a good look at it. So here it is, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, the SIB itself is an IBF inflatable boat fishing Hydrus. That's the uh, company there, they've got a website, you can order these there. Um, this model here is a 3.7 meter air deck. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the SIBs, you sort of get two types of decks um, for these. Those that are air, so they're inflated, which this one is and those that are solid, that are either aluminium or wood, and they slot together, usually three or four pieces. You see mine's got a puncture repair there. I usually have a cover on the deck um, to save it from punctures, but I haven't, I haven't put that on today just because I'm not expecting to catch a great amount and there's not going to be many hooks flying around. So yeah, that's the boat. Um, fantastic boat. Nice and lightweight. Comes in at about, well, I think it's 60 kilos, maybe under that. Um, perfect length for two to three people. I often have, often myself and my brother fishing on this, but we've had three, we've even had five, um, which is its max capacity. Very stable boat, you can't really flip these, um, even in even in big swell, they ride well, you can punch through waves, they're brilliant. Um, yeah, sibs are, sibs are the way forward in my opinion for small boats. So that's the boat, we'll go on to a bit more about it later on and a few of the features that it has that I like. The business end, the engine, this is a Tahatsu, four stroke, 20 horsepower. There's the sticker. Fuel injection, um, 2020 model, manual start, manual trim, great engine. Um, just, yeah, exactly what you want really. Reliable, fast, economical, quiet and smooth. Lovely engine. Um, expensive <laughs> but worth worth every penny for that peace of mind and uh, yeah you probably save save the money that you spend in the long run on fuel we'll talk a bit more about the engine later and how it runs coming to the transom here beach master style launch wheels um, pneumatic tyres that just flip up when you're in the water. I like these wheels because uh, they don't take up a whole lot of space. And uh, yeah, they just work well. Work very well on, on slipways and concrete. Not so well on sand or shingle. But I don't launch too much on that anyway, so I'm not too fussed. And then another little detail is my transducer mount just at the back here. This is a railblazer system. Um, you can see the railblazer mount there next to the wheel base. And this just flicks down so it protrudes about six inches under the hole. Follow that up there to the navigation unit. This is a little setup that I made myself just out of a sort of Pelique style waterproof box. Got a Garmin Striker 4 mounted on top there and a holder just for my phone which I use Navionics on and we'll talk a bit more about that later. Some rod holders there Got some rods on me today, did a bit of trawling. Not expecting to catch much, but anyway, that's not the point of the video. Bench seat here. This is a Lemo uh, kayak paddle float. So they're used, used for, uh, I think it's used for helping the self rescue actually. But it's the perfect size, fits right on the bench, provides a bit of, uh, bit of cushioning. And forwards here, up to the bow. Dry bag, that's got all of my stuff in that dry bag. I like to keep everything in the dry bag um, just because 
you know, you never know, you could get flipped over, it's unlikely. Wave could come over the bow. Everything important is in there, VHF radio, uh, puncture repair kit, engine repair kit, anchor, uh, spare pump, loads of kit, food, water, spare clothes, everything in that dry bag, because I want to keep it dry. There's no point having it littering the deck, getting soaking wet and bouncing around everywhere, which comes on to the second point about this um, dry bag. The beautiful thing about dry bags is most of them have some sort of like handle loop. So I've uh, clipped it on and tied it round the bow cleat there. So that this bag probably weighs about 30 kilos with all the kit in there. And I don't want that flying around when I'm speeding along at 17 knots. And anyone that owns a SIB will know that stuff just likes to bump around on it. You'll, you'll, you'll stick everything up at the bow and then 15 minutes later it will all be down when you're sat at the stern. So yeah. Everything's strapped down, that I don't want moving around. See the camera tripod there. And underneath the uh, the dry bag here, it's a 12 litre fuel tank. And that's clipped in around. I like to keep this stuff up at the front, um, especially when you're on your own. It's good to have nice even weight distribution. So having 10 litres of fuel and 30 kilos of kit up there has a nice, nice effect to keep the bow right down. So when you're going along, Especially if you're into waves, you'll, 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 you'll just end up like that, going on like that. You want to be going on like that. So having a bit of weight at the front really, really does help with the stability. You'd be amazed how much difference it makes. One last detail, two Scotty rod holders. So there's four rod holders in total. I don't really like having rods lying loose on the deck. The hooks and, you know, they just bounce around. Liable to get trod on. So yeah, try and keep everything in rod holders. So there it is. Okay, so let's talk about um, engines. Um, so when I first got this sim, I had a uh, 10 horsepower two-stroke Johnson, and uh, it was enough to push it along um, with two people, uh, absolutely fine. Um, went, you know, went all over the place with that engine, but uh, in the end, I just kept kept breaking down on me. Um, and it was just a bit unreliable. In fact, I even ended up getting a 3.3 uh, horsepower Mercury two-stroke as a, as a um, auxiliary engine, as a backup. And I'd keep that on the transom um, along with the 10 horsepower. <laughs> In the event of a breakdown, I could use the, uh, the, the auxiliary. And I did have to use it a few times. And uh, I, just, I was just getting to the point where I'd go, go out for the day, and all I'd be worried about was the engine breaking down. And uh, that's just no fun, is it? Um, so I took the plunge and purchased the Tatsu 20 horsepower, which you saw earlier. A lot of money, but it's just worth it for the peace of mind. Um, and just a fantastic engine. Uh, yeah, really, really impressed with it. And I've probably done almost 100 hours on it now. Um, so it's due its first service soon. But I've got no complaints. Um, no complaints with that engine at all. And really for a sim of this size, which is rated for 20 horsepower, I think that's what you want to be using. Somewhere between 15 to 20, um, especially when you're going out, um, you know, going out a few miles, especially if there's one or two of you with kit. Um, it just means you've got no worries about, if the wind picks up a bit, you can just steam back in, you know, do, do 20 knots, 18 knots back in, and you're there before you know it. And you're not gonna get caught out by the weather so badly. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll just run run through this engine quickly. Angle you down a bit so you can see what's going on. Right. So safety first. Always wear your kill cord, especially when you're travelling at speed. Um, just ticking along now, doing about three four knots tide. Um, at this point, this engine is hardly even consuming any fuel. I mean, I'm sure if I was doing this all day, that 12 litres would probably do me in excess of 40, 50 miles. Um, 12 litre tank, I've done 26, 20, you know, 26 mile round trips, and I've still got two litres spare. So that gives you an idea of how economical it is, and that's running at probably on average sort of 16, 17 knots cruising. So yeah, doesn't use much fuel at all. Lovely to go out for the day and you know, go out bar and only spend a tenner on fuel. Any of you uh, boat owners out there that own something a bit bigger probably know all too well the, uh, the choice of, of fuel costs on bigger vessels. So this is it ticking along right now. 
little bit of little bit of throttle and uh, doing about eight knots at the moment. Just about quarter throttle. This is a comfortable speed. Move it up to about half throttle. And now the plane. Hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the engine. It's not too loud at all this engine, it's quite quiet and a nice smooth sound. Um, love it or hate it, the two trucks are noisy. <laughs> it can be nice sometimes but they are noisy. On the plane now, we're going along at about 12, 13 knots. Half roll, a bit more. Very comfortable cruising speed here, it's about 16 knots, probably a bit bumpy on the camera there. Now I'm going to have to grab you for full speed. Where you want it to down there and then go you up yeah great bit of fun great bit of fun that's one of the things i really like about these sips is that you can they can be a good fishing platform but they can also be a good bit of fun especially when you're nipping along at sort of 20 25 knots <laughs> on a little thing like this um yeah just get the adrenaline going a bit sometimes um and at that speed i mean it will see it obviously is guzzling a bit more fuel, but on the scale of things, it's nothing. Like I said earlier, a tenant's worth for 20, 26 miles, you know, just fantastic. Um, really, really am happy with this engine. Wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd always go a bit bigger, but then you have the weight issue and also it's, it, won't, it won't handle the bigger engine, this boat. Um, so yeah, that's what a 20 horsepower would do on something like this. Great bit of fun. If you're new to Sibs, you might be thinking to yourself that uh, a 3.7 metre boat is quite small. And uh, you, you're right in thinking that. 3.7 metres isn't a, isn't a huge, you know, it's not a very long boat. Um, but actually, they're quite well thought out and uh, you do get quite a bit of space in them. Um, at the moment, I'm stood up here, right up to the bow. So you can imagine there's quite a bit of space for two people, especially when you sat on the tubes and on the bench seats. Like I said earlier, I've had five people in this boat before. It didn't go very fast and uh, it was a little bit cramped, but uh, you know, it's perfectly fine and safe as long as you're not trying to go at ridiculous speeds. Um, another thing I think people have a misconception about SIBs is that they're unstable. Now that's not true at all. As you can see, I'm gonna walk about now on this whilst it's moving along and I'll try and rock it. I can move it a little bit, but not a great deal. I'll sit right on the edge of the tube here. And I'm leaning my body weight right out. And not a lot is happening. As you can see, it's ticking along fine. Make a slight correction for the steering. So they're very stable craft, um, very stable. I mean, obviously that's owed to all the air and the tubes and the massive sponsors, but uh, yeah, you can, you can move about on these, no problem. You don't have to be sat down all day. Um, you can stand up and fish. I often, I will often stand towards one side and fish off like that. Very stable, no issues at all. That's me moving side to side. Has a small effect on it, but nothing to worry about. And you can really just, you know, move about on these things absolutely fine very confident so the next thing i want to talk about is my navigation setup and uh and sonar um obviously these are really really useful bits of kit in the modern day 
um, it can help helps you find uh, perhaps fishing spots that you like or you know in an emergency get back to your uh, your place of launch so uh, yeah really important to have a decent nav set up um, on, on a boat like this uh, especially when you're going out um, you know a few miles off if you're just pottering around estuaries and stuff it's not so important but, yeah when you're going that, that distance offshore you just want a bit of a fail safe really in case the fog comes in um, and you become disorientated so uh, as I was saying earlier everything is inside and mounted on uh, this, this Pelly case here so inside there is a it's just a 12 volt battery um, which powers my Garmin Striker 4. Um, now it's probably a little bit too bright for it to pick up on the screen there, but that's just got a basic sonar. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Um, useful feature for finding reefs, wrecks, and all sorts. Um, yeah, I've had this, I've had the Garmin Striker unit for probably four years now, which I think is absolutely amazing for a, for a fish finder. Um, on, on something like this and in fact I had it on my kayak and then when I transitioned to a sieve I moved it to this so you know it's been in pretty rough environments and it's survived that long so kudos to Garmin um, for making such an awesome unit at a great price point I think that came in at about 120 quid very impressive um, you can see there wobbling I'll show you if I speed it up a little bit the vibrations uh, yeah they, they ease off a little bit it's just at low speeds, what was a bit, and uh, that's just a, that's just my phone there with a um, with a Navionics, um, the Navionics app open as a chart plotter. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Navionics, um, definitely go and have a look at it. Uh, look at what it can do. It's a really useful uh, mobile app for navigating and finding spots. There you have it. That's my setup. Um, hopefully. This video has been of some interest to you. Um, it gives you an idea of what you can do on a small boat like this. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, really appreciate all the support, likes and comments, subscribes. Uh, it really encourages me to make more videos. Um, so I'm always interested to know what people would like to see videos of as uh, I've made this one based on some requests. So yeah, thank you very much for those. Um, yeah, if you like to see what I get up to a bit on a regular basis, I've got an Instagram which is fishing with Oban, so uh, you can see what I get up to on a sort of daily basis. <laughs> Not that interesting, but maybe it is. Yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.